Dan Hirsch is someone I've worked with. Is the word forever apt here? <laughs> Honestly, I, think, I don't know how far back it goes, but I think it was before I was in the United States Senate. So we're talking decades of, and I just think he is tremendous. He's a lecturer, University of California, Santa Cruz, and that doesn't begin to describe his contribution to safety um, from toxics and the rest. These issues are matters of life and death. So, Mr. Hirsch, do you want to please begin, and we'll give you six minutes. Chairman Boxer, thank you so much for the invitation to appear here today. Uh, the Japanese parliamentary investigation into the Fukushima tragedy concluded that it was caused by a too cozy relationship between the reactor operator and its regulator that allowed the nuclear plant to be built to withstand only an earthquake and tsunami far smaller than actually occurred. These problems plague the American nuclear regulatory system as well. My testimony will focus on an examination of one case study, Diablo Canyon, that suggests the Fukushima lessons have not been learned here. This is particularly important in light of the extraordinary new seismic discoveries near the site and the inadequate response to them by the NRC. Unless the underlying dysfunctional nature of nuclear regulation in this country rapidly undergoes sweeping reform, a Fukushima-type disaster or worse can occur here, perhaps on the California coast. Diablo was designed and permitted based on the claim that there were no active earthquake faults within 30 kilometers of the site. We now know, however, that there are at least four large active faults nearby, all capable of more ground motion than the plant was originally designed for. Each time there was a new belated seismic discovery at Diablo, however, the commission gave pg e a pass. Rules were relaxed, safety margins reduced, public hearings denied. The most recent discoveries of increased seismic risk have met the same fate. At the construction permit hearings in 1970, the intervener asked for a few hours to present evidence of nearby faults. PG&E and the commission staff objected, and the NRC refused to permit the matter to be heard. One board member strenuously- Say that one more time, Go, that last in, point. In 1970, interveners wanted a few hours to be able to present evidence of undiscovered faults. Both PG&E and the commission staff objected. The licensing board refused to permit the testimony. Tom Pigford, a member of the committee of the board, dissented, saying, shouldn't we find out before we pour concrete if there are earthquake faults? Thank you. He lost, and they went ahead and poured the concrete, and almost immediately it was revealed that there was an offshore fault, the Hosgri fault, much larger than the plant was designed for. But instead of withdrawing the permit or requiring a full upgrade to deal with the new fault, NRC waived the normal requirements of the license and granted an exception for the Hosgri. Only minimal, minimal retrofits were required. But it didn't end then. Within days of granting the operating license, NRC, egg on his face, had to rescind it because it turned out the PG&E had used the wrong blueprints for putting in the retrofits, mirror image blueprints placing the uh, retrofits in the wrong places. They had to do it all over again, leading to a cost moving from $320 million to over $5 billion. The cost over and largely passed on to the ratepayer. But we were sure, don't worry, we're sure there can't be any more faults out there. And then, a few years later, the second and the third nearby faults were discovered, the Los Osos and San Luis Bay faults. Again, we were told, don't worry, there can't be any more surprises. And then in 2008, the U.S. Geologic Survey found the fourth fault that wasn't supposed to exist, the shoreline fault, coming within 600 meters of the plant. PG&E and NRC said, don't worry, the three recently identified faults were well within the license limits. But then something absolutely remarkable happened. Dr. Michael Peck, the uh, senior resident inspector for NRC at Diablo, actually went and checked the license. And what he discovered was that all three of those faults, according to pg e itself, had ground motions greater than the plant license allowed. He said that it should be shut down until the problem was fixed. So pg e proposed, instead of fixing the plant, to amend the license to remove the provisions they were violating. But even that didn't work because they couldn't meet the criteria for a license amendment, so they withdrew it. And that should have been the end of the matter. The plant should have been shut down until it was retrofitted. But instead, NRC 
allowed PG&E to, in essence, amend the license without amending the license, all to avoid a public hearing. And then Peck took the gutsy step of filing the dissenting professional opinion, which this September, as expected, the NRC rejected. But here's where the story gets most troubling, with developments essentially not reported to the public until today. On the very same day NRC issued to the news media its denial of Dr. Peck's dissent, PG&E released an 1,800-page study required by the state um, of the uh, seismic situation near the facility. And they discovered that the shoreline fault, which they hadn't even known about until a few years earlier, was twice as long as they previously thought, that a number of the faults are now estimated to produce larger magnitude earthquakes than they had thought just a few years ago, and that, again, all of these are estimated to produce ground motions in excess of what's permitted in the license for all faults except the Hanskri. It's deja vu all over again, repeat of the problem we've seen year after year after year. And unless we fix these problems, of uh, regulated entities pressing for weakening of safety requirements and of regulators viewing themselves more as allies of the industry rather than protectors of public safety, we will not have learned the lessons of Fukushima. And a Fukushima-type disaster is just waiting to happen here. All it takes, just as at Fukushima, is an earthquake larger than the plant was designed to withstand. It could happen tomorrow. Thank you for your testimony. It's quite riveting. We'll go with the Honorable Sam Blakesley, uh, a former state, I have to say Republican senator, because that's important to know that this is bipartisan testimony. We're very honored to have Sam Blakesley here, the Honorable Sam Blakesley. You have great background in, in nuclear safety and serving people, and I talked to you, I don't know, what, a year or two ago, when all this was hitting the fan about this new earthquake discovery, and you were so... Uh, forthcoming, so please proceed. Thank you for this invitation to testify today at the hearing regarding actions to ensure nuclear plant safety in the aftermath of lessons learned at Fukushima. I'm Dr. Sam Blakesley, and let me start my comments by stating that I am a lifelong Republican, a scientist, and am not anti-nuclear. Uh, my testimony here uh, today reflects the culmination of my experiences as a former state senator as the GOP leader in the California State Assembly, as a member of the California Seismic Safety Commission, and a former senior research geophysicist with Exxon. When elected to California's legislature a decade ago, I raised concerns that state-of-the-art seismic assessment technologies used by oil companies had never been applied to identifying offshore earthquake faults near Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. I therefore, in 2006, authored legislation, and Governor Schwarzenegger subsequently signed legislation that mandated the, and mandated a report that was released just a couple of months ago about the new seismic hazards at Diablo. But even before the release of that report, as Mr. Hirsch has just testified, in 2008, um, the utility confidently declared to state regulators and the public that their seismic study program had already learned everything there was to know about the surrounding seismic landscape near the plant. Amazingly, only weeks after these assurances in writing of safety, the USGS announced the discovery of the powerful shoreline fault within 600 meters of the plant. And now here we are with updated seismic data from the studies released just a few months ago confirming what many had feared and what the utility had long denied, a number of new earthquake threats do exist, threats that are larger and closer to the plant than previously believed. The report uncovers the following revelations. Contrary to earlier representations, the Hosgri Fault is, in fact, connected to the San Simeon Fault, capable of producing a 171-kilometer rupture. The Hosgri also connects the powerful Shoreline Fault, introducing the potential for a magnitude 7.3 just 600 meters from the plant and 300 meters from the intakes, a magnitude 7.3. There are now five earthquake hazards that can produce shaking greater than an earthquake on the Hosgrave Fault, the same fault which the utility claimed was the controlling fault and the largest threat to Diablo. Despite these astonishing findings, the utility continues to argue the plant is now safe and, in fact, now it is safer than ever before. 
How is that done? They've concluded this by developing a new, less conservative methodology that reduces shaking estimates from all nearby earthquakes. The information about these new faults is so compelling that it led Dr. Michael Peck, the NRC senior resident inspector at Diablo, to issue uh, an official dissenting professional opinion stating these earthquakes could, in fact, by the utility's own estimates, produce shaking stronger than permitted under the current license. He called for closure of the plant until the utility could prove that the reactors could withstand potential earthquakes on these faults. Yet, his concerns were silenced by the NRC. For the NRC to de facto accept this new, less conservative methodology, which reduces estimated shaking from these nearby earthquakes, would be a stunning delegation of authority to the utility and NRC staff that would result in dramatically weakened seismic safety standards at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. This passive erosion of regulatory oversight is exactly what led to the Fukushima disaster, the Deepwater Horizon disaster, and the recent unexpected shutdown of California's San Onofre nuclear generating station, all of which were foreseeable and avoidable. In fact, just this year, the Office of Inspector General at the NRC reviewed the factors leading to the shutdown of San Onofre and chastised the NRC for allowing the utility to sidestep the license amendment process. So the question before us today is, how will the NRC respond to these new revelations about new earthquake threats that surround Diablo? Will they repeat the mistakes of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority and rely upon the utility's representations? Will they give the utility a pass around the license amendment process, which is exactly what happened at San Onofre? Or will they recognize the dangers of passive regulatory oversight and insist on higher seismic safety standards? You heard in the prior testimony, the commissioners testified to the complex and convoluted licensing history at Diablo. But we now know much more about seismic issues than when Diablo was licensed. Therefore, the NRC has a responsibility to the public to define updated seismic standards through a formal license amendment process that protects the public interest. This process ensures a robust, independent setting where the best technical arguments can be made in public rather than behind closed doors between the utility and NRC staff. I'd like to use this opportunity to urge a license amendment process for Diablo in the light of these new earthquake threats. Thank you. Thank you so much. Senator. Could you also confirm that ever since the Hasgrave Fault was first discovered, to your knowledge, the NRC has never required PG&E to prove that the reactor's safety systems could withstand such a severe earthquake using the conservative safety assumptions that NRC is supposed to use? I would say that's accurate, and I would probably go further. The uh, technical methodologies that were employed during the licensing process to calculate ground motion from a particular earthquake was included in the deliberations of the NRC and was part of establishing standards. What's transpired over the past years and has accelerated during the last five years is that with each progressive discovery of a new seismic threat, the calculations of shaking from any earthquake has systematically gone down so that now all of these earthquake threats that have been identified are calculated to produce more shaking than that worst case Hosgri. But all of the shaking from all those scenarios has markedly come down to ensure the ability to say that the plant is safe, which is why I feel it's so important to have a rigorous license amendment process because if they got it wrong, the consequences would be catastrophic. And yes, for the state of California, um, yes, for the nuclear industry, uh, but more importantly, and frankly, for my family. We live within 10 kilometers of that plant, and I brought this, which my daughter gave me, um, who every night sleeps by that plant. I hear and this is not a technical argument. This is an argument about safety for the public. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.